He seems to have come from the capital. Bizarre. Bizarre. This figure is known to me, but it's impossible. He was a former of uh, he was a former student of our village. Look how quickly he has grown up. His garments are not dainty, but he is quite different from the boys of our commune. Goodness, fair man, fallen in love already? Don't talk nonsense. In fact, the newcomer was very good looking with his straight nose, his large forehead, his twinkling eyes and his meditative air. And his meditative air. Paying no attention to these murmurs, he was lost in his recollections when he returned to the hut. Yes, it was not completely different from his past. The same thin wooden bowl, a wooden bowl board, supported by two rotten brackets, black with smokes, black with smoke, still served as an ancestral altar. The same worn out table placed against the wall of the central bay was still decorated with a rectangle of red paper full of very regularly written Chinese characters. The state from now on stable and everlasting. The country from now on res uh, resurrected and, re and rejuvenated. Rejuvenated? After the rains, sky and land are bright with fine weather. The sun and the moon, the sun and the moon are resplendent after being gloomy. The same parallel sentences were hung on the two bamboo columns. The worn threadbare turban was caught on the right column. And on the left, a lute filled with cobwebs. The same water pipe made of bamboo was now as brilliant as ivory because of age. And there were the same baked earth bowls arranged in lines on the stall made of plated thin bamboo lasts. Nothing had changed, but where was the innkeeper? Was he still alive? Who were these young people? Why were just, uh, why were, why were just burning on a non-ceremonial -ceremoni day? Perplexed, he turned here and there when an old man appeared with an, a woman in a sling at his shoulder. It was a portion of red painted bamboo for holding paper. Greatly rejoiced, the young horseman stepped towards Hastily. Great rejoiced, the young horseman stepped forward hastily and grasped the hands of the old man. Grandfather, do you remember me? The old man rubbed his eyes several times, scrutinized him, then cried out with great joy. Damn, lay down! The mandarin attached of the petty king. Have you stepped on the footprint of Fudong? You have grown up so much. I was almost unable to recognize you. But thank goodness for the timbre, uh, for the timbre of your voice, and especially the scar at the corner of your eye. Hmm. Without them, it would be impossible to identi identify you. Ha ha, my mandarin. Lay down, reddened it with confusion. Confused, confusion, confusion. Please remember me always as the youngster who was living with your assistants. The innkeeper laughed and joked joyfully. Have any of you recognized him? He is the hero whose name had been at everyone's lips when the army of Marshal Nebo completely destroyed the enemy. The unpre unprecedented, uh, un the unprecedented, the unprecedented exploits of Ladam was spread all over the country. I had already guessed that it was Ladam, 
and no one else, the youngest disciple of His Excellency Nguyen Chai. During the time he lived at my inn, although still an adolescent, adolescent, his calligraphy was already very, very beautiful. I have kept his auto, autograph there on that red paper. It is his writing. The group became animated and noisy. I told you, yes, I had a little doubt, but at the bottom of my heart, I was sure that it was our student laid out. In the past, we'd bring our buffaloes to the meadow of, on, the sand, uh, on the sand bank. Later in the afternoon, the river would smell, would swell with bundles of grass on our heads. We crossed the river on the backs of our buffaloes. As for Lidam raising his books in one hand, he swam standing, his trunk straight as if he was walking on firm land. We would make vain efforts to urge our beast to catch up with him. Do you remember Lidam? With his ability to scream, it is natural that he could capture the enemy alive in the in the naval ba uh, battle. Everyone had something to say. The conversation was joyful, joyful and ardent, with no distinction whatsoever between host and guest. It was as if the members of the family were receiving a parent returning after a long voyage. Lenham was questioned, uh, questioned on the details of the kidnapping of the admirer on daily, on daily life in the royal palace. A young country girl of fine stature was seated near the old man. She had a kerchief. She had a kerchief around her head and wore a lined brown tunic. She shyly fixed her eyes on Lena. When she, then she said, Every day I go and fetch wood in Gongsun Forest. After climbing the mountain, I follow the Tangfu Grotto. After, walk, after wading the stream, I cross the Tongok Bridge. I know that the grotto and the bridge are associated with Master Yuan Chai, but I don't know the meaning of these names and why they were given. My uncle, my elder brothers, and above all, the Rudite Mandarin Leda. I ask you kindly to explain it. Ledam did not want to speak before the others and kept silent. But the audience was of the same view with the girl, looked fixedly waiting. He felt obligi uh, obligated to stand up. Hengu means pure nothingness. On the summit of the, co uh, of the concert, there are vestiges of the pagoda retreat by the white clouds of the great monk Fat Lua, the spokesman of the, the the spokesman of canonical Buddhism under the Chen dynasty. The Tenghu Grotto became a place of, uh, of spiritual enjoyment in the leisure time of the minister of the right, Chen Yundan, the maternal grandfather of our great master Nguyen Chai. When he was a child, the master lived there with his grandfather. And when he retired from his functions of dignitary of the court, he returned there and lived as a hermit. He explained that in that grotto, grotto one could find a calm, quiet place with cool shed, full of perfumes to inhale and colors to admire. One had everything in nothingness, a pure nothingness. Some enthusiastic participants wanted to express their ideal feelings, but the girl who initiated the conversation briskly stopped them. Please, we should let him finish this explanation first. Let him cast a furtive glance toward the girl whose round, roundish cheeks so suddenly turned red. Attention being restored, Ledam went on. Ledam went on. The Tongok, transparent gem, 
Jam. The Tongok Bridge was built by our Minister of the Rights in the description entitled Tangu Grotto by Master Nguyen Chai's father. The name was mentioned from the, uh, from the grotto going to the southeast. On wood, one would meet a winding stream and a waterfall with every limpid waters. On the other bank, there was a huge block of stone of, red, uh, of reddish brown color with a flat surface as large as a big bed. When the weather was good, the minister accompanied by his grandson went there to lie down at full length to recite poems or to listen to the falling leaves. The waters were always choppy and waiting Wadding uh, was dangerous. That is why the minister had the bridge built and called it Transparent Jam. The old man was radiant with, uh, with joy. He took out of the red bamboo too uh, an, old, uh, an old manuscript, waved it before the surprised eyes of the audience. What Ledam has just said is found in these sheets, which I have uh, salvaged from the, dis from the destruction of the governmental and which I have concealed at the price of my head. Actually, it is manuscript entitled Notes on the Story Related to Bang Ho, written by Minister Nguyen Chai. Bang Ho is a Postodium uh, of the of the author's ma maternal grandfather, Tainu Grotto, the Tonok Bridge, and many other things are minutely described there. So you see, my children, that you must learn how to read. You must see Celeste plot away with books. I regret. I regret that one of my feet is already in the grave. But as long as my eyes can differentiate, differentiate, dif differentiate the steam above the bowls of tea, I will continue reading. He stopped. Then he almost cried out. Our master, which I no longer exist, but his disciples, his students and his successors are plentiful and hold high in his stand uh, and hold high his standard. We do not lack teachers. He cast a sudden glance in the direction of Leda. I know someone of vast and profound knowledge. He is residing at the Puan Pagoda, two miles from here, quite near the Tufuk Pagoda. I can help you find him. And certainly, Lenam will also help him. Will you not, Lenam? A good omen. Lenam was gratified. The old man was still sturdy, as energetic as he had always been. And the youths were eagerly ready to devote themselves to a great cause. Saying goodbye, he heard the patriarch incitement to study. Yes, one must see Leslie study and learn not only from books, but also from real life. The innkeeper and his, ho uh, and his host had just given him fine lessons of patriotism, nat and humanism. Basketfuls of food Baskets full of wisdom are obtained after one day of travel. A proverb had rightly said. Feeling lighthearted and a sense of relief, he began to go up the mountain. Okay, so that is the end of the part for today. Thank you for listening, and we'll keep reading tomorrow. Good night.